Hey there, how's it going everyone? This is MimeBlank and welcome back to the channel. You know that feeling when you see something and like it so much that you have to get it no matter what? Well, this is exactly what happened with this ITX case I'm unboxing here today. I saw this in a random internet ad almost two months ago, I think, and I immediately liked it. Unfortunately, it seems Spire, the company that manufactures this case, isn't readily offering its products all across the world. I had to hunt this thing down and found it on eBay in the end, and the price I paid is $25 shipped to my door for a new case, of course. This is actually the price of this here cute cube. Yes, it costs $25 to own this thing and if it's worth it or not, we're going to talk about in the following minutes. The Spire PowerCube 715B is tiny, so let me put things into perspective by placing this Ryzen box next to it. Yeah, it measures 10.5 inches height by 11 inches long and it's only 8 and something inches in width, but it can still hide almost 10 inches of graphics card if you so desire. Alright, I'll be upfront with you guys, there's some compromises here that not all of you will like, but let me repeat the $25 price tag for a case with both side panels out of acrylic, an acrylic front, an included 120mm fan that lights up, and build quality that, honestly, is just the biggest surprise in all of this. I expected this case to be built really bad, but very, very much to my surprise, this is actually above decent. The cost cutting must have been done on the metal grade or thickness, although it is really sturdy for a birdie and cheap ITX cube. I was very nicely surprised to see that even the inside of the acrylic panels comes covered in protective film. I didn't get this on a case that costs 4 times as much. They skimped on the accessories for sure, you only get a generic case manual and a few screws, but I don't think this is a problem at this price point. The PowerCube 715B can accommodate both micro ATX and mini ITX sized motherboards with a reverse mount, so everything's going to be upside down. Now, this is where the compromises start coming in. To keep things compact, they had virtually one option for the PSU location. So your standard sized PSU, no need for small form factor ones, gets fixed into this plastic bracket and is then inserted into the case, upon which it completely blocks your entire build making the acrylic side panel useless. Yeah. I understand the compromise, I accept it for $25, the case still looks gorgeous to me, so if you can't or won't, then keep searching, since this is really bad. Also, there's only about 3-3.5 inches of clearance for the CPU heatsink, so your only option is small form factor horizontal designs. Fortunately, there's some really good coolers like this, but I don't think you can squeeze in a power-hungry CPU in this case, since you simply won't be able to cool it. Maybe a top-mounted 120mm AIO would be okay, but there's no way to fix it unless you DIY it in there. Speaking of blocking a view, the back panel is semi-opaque. No coating on it or anything of that sort, just a very dark tint, so I wouldn't necessarily worry that stuff will show through. But, I mean, by this point they could have made it completely clear, it doesn't matter since you have a massive PSU in the front of your entire system. Another thing that doesn't sit right with me is the front fan. This is a 120mm semi-transparent blue-bladed fan that lights up. It looks neat and is very quiet, almost inaudible. Problem is that it's flush to the front acrylic, so the only air it can suck in is through the side vents. I can guarantee you this will equate to no airflow, so I'd really recommend populating the bottom with an 18mm fan. The top is bland and I really don't like the air cutouts. Like I mentioned, they don't allow for a fan to be placed here, so you'll have to get creative and zip tie one or something for extra airflow. It really would have been nice if they gave us an option for a 120mm AIO in there at the expense of the last PCIe slot on a micro ATX board. Also, the last of the I don't like keys, and I'm done, seriously, is the cables which are the standard multicolored ones that we used to get 20 years ago in cases. Again, not a huge problem at this price point, but I'm thinking that I'd have given up on the backside acrylic protective film for some black cables. However, you do get a USB 3.0 and 2.0 on the front, alongside audio inputs for mic and headphones. I like the ingenious place for the SSD, which is under the motherboard tray, and the fact that you also have an option for a regular hard drive on the front side of the case. But besides this, there's no other storage mount, so if your board doesn't have M.2 on it, well, there's that. The power and reset buttons are made of low quality plastic, but don't look half bad in my opinion, and I do like their placement and the fact that the reset button is red colored so you won't push it accidentally. 
you also get three decent sized cutouts to hide the inevitable cable mess you'll have with that front mounted PSU. Another thing I like is the fact that if you go micro ATX you can certainly have two graphics cards in this tiny little cube. What's important here guys is the price tag and the looks. This case looks gorgeous to me on the outside but it's ugly with air coats on the inside although I do get the compromises really. Build quality is certainly above the price point and was the biggest surprise to me and I think it's one of the prettiest ITX cases that you can have. I simply just love the way it looks. What's more this is a cube where it matters, the side not the front like most cases that call themselves small cubes but extend half a yard in the back. We will have a very nice build in this tiny cube that I am sure you'll really enjoy. Just waiting on some parts and I'll start working on this as well. But until next time thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and don't forget to check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description. See you next time everybody, bye bye.